I just kept pushing and pushing myself. I kept getting further and further into my masculine energy and it wasn't until my body completely broke down and my body developed all of these health issues that I realized something has to change here. Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and transform their lives. So if that's something you wanna do, you should consider subscribing and sticking around. So I actually was not going to film today. This is not my normal camera ready makeup or hair, but I really just wanted to turn on the camera and chat very casually and talk about basically how I lost my feminine energy and how my feminine energy became wounded and subsequently how I got Got my feminine energy back, how I reclaimed my feminine energy, how I healed my feminine energy. So it all kind of started more around like late adolescence, you know, around that time in high school when everyone is trying to like get into the best colleges and everyone's trying to take the best classes. Maybe not everyone, but that was me. I was trying to get the best grades, fill up my resume in the best way possible and do all these cool things so that I could get into the best college. And I don't necessarily regret that at all by any means because I did get into my dream college, but everything was about more of like external achievements. Everything was about winning. Everything was about being the best. It wasn't about feeling good. It wasn't about tapping into my body or my feelings or my heart or my intuition. It was not any of those things. And then it was just kind of more of the same thing in college, you know? Again, it was about getting good grades so that you could get the best internships and then get the best job after college. And it was just kind of this hamster wheel of like trying to do the best, trying to be the best, yada, yada, yada. And it got very exhausting. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to achieve and win and you know get good grades and uh, get good jobs and things like that nothing wrong with that at all but that heavy focus on that took me into my masculine energy but besides that around like age 21 or something i really got stuck in my fight or flight mode i was there for a few years and that's honestly because of just like circumstances that were happening in my life that was the summer before my senior year in college when i was kind of getting ready to like apply to all those like big fancy corporate jobs and that was stressing me out especially because i didn't actually want to go and work for any of those big fancy jobs but i convinced myself that that's what i needed to do that was also the exact same time that my mom got re-diagnosed with cancer except this time it was stage four cancer so that obviously weighed really heavy on me as well. Cole was having some problems around this time too. So it was kind of just like these external circumstances that were weighing me down, that were really, really heavy on me. And so I felt like I had to step fully into my masculine energy to kind of like protect myself and get through that period of time in my life. I was essentially in fight or flight. But the thing with feminine energy is that feminine energy cannot exist when there is not safety in the body. When a woman feels unsafe, it is almost impossible for her to be relaxed into her feminine energy. It's pretty much impossible. And that is for a good reason. Our masculine energy is the energy that protects us. But what happens a lot of times and what happened to me is that a woman will get stuck in her fight or flight state and then she will just stay there for a really, really long time and she can't ever get herself out of it. She can't ever get herself out of that masculine energy. And that's kind of where I was finding myself. I was getting stuck in that masculine energy. And then I started being more the masculine energy in my relationship. I started being more controlling. I was doing the opposite of leading back and being in my feminine. I was very much in my masculine energy in that dynamic with Cole in that specific time in our life. And even just the way I moved my body, like the exercises that I did, I would go for long runs and I would always try to either run farther every single day or PR every single day, like have the best time every single day or just do any other type of like more intense type of workout. And I didn't really feel like my workouts were good enough unless I took it to an intensity, unless I was very exhausted and very sore afterwards. And as I talked about in my healthy habits video, that is not good for the female body, especially for our menstrual cycles and everything. But I just kept pushing and pushing myself. I kept getting further and further into my masculine energy and it wasn't until my body completely broke down and my body developed all of these health issues that I realized something has to change here. So through that process of healing my body and my mind, I realized through some research and things like that, that I was very disconnected from my feminine energy. And when I kind of stumbled upon this topic of feminine energy, it's still 
stood out to me and intuitively I knew that that was a really big struggle that I was having and that was something that I really needed to focus on. So in the rest of this video, I'm gonna talk about things that I specifically did to reclaim my feminine energy, connect back to my feminine energy and heal that part of me. Now I'm sharing my own personal things that I did. So these might not all be relevant for everyone. They might help some people and not others. I'm just trying to share what helped me. So the first thing I did and the reason why I did this first is because it was kind of the only thing that I knew how to do and how to improve this part of myself. I started putting more effort into my appearance and my beauty and my style and all of that. I had kind of lost touch with this side of myself and through that whole process of kind of being in my masculine energy and then having my health really decline, I just kind of started looking like a potato every day and it wasn't making me feel good. And so I started putting myself together. Even when I wasn't really feeling that well, I would start putting myself together and putting on cute outfits. And if I didn't have cute outfits, I would go find some cute outfits because I deserve to wear some cute outfits. I started wearing some makeup again, you know, not a lot. I don't wear like a ton of makeup every day by any means, but I was kind of going makeup free every single day for a while. And um, it just wasn't making me feel like my most beautiful, vibrant self. And so I started kind of embracing that side of myself again. And I always recommend that this is a really good place to start because it is so easy. Like anyone can start just taking care of themselves better. Everyone can start trying to put more effort into their appearance. That part isn't that hard, but really tapping into the energy of divine feminine, that's a lot harder. But putting effort into your appearance and effort into your beauty and having fun with your beauty, when you do this, you naturally start tapping into the energy of that divine feminine. Now, I also started leaning back in my romantic relationship. So like I said, I was starting to be a bit more in my masculine energy in the relationship and we were both feeling the consequences of this and i didn't like it i didn't enjoy it so i intentionally started leaning back and what i mean by leaning back is that i stopped trying to control everything so much i stopped trying to tell him what he needed to do i stopped trying to solve his problems for him i started being more of that feminine energy in the relationships i gave him the opportunity to step up and lead where before i wasn't i was just taking that all for myself you know i realized that i was kind of treating him like a baby and mothering him a little bit and i think that this dynamic is so common this happens so often where women Will start to mother their man and i think i need to do like a whole video on this topic because i do think it is so common and so important but i had to force myself to get out of that space and for me personally working on that relationship component was a huge part of it because i at that time i was already very much in a committed relationship actually i think i was already engaged at that point so that was obviously a big part of my life and something that I really needed to work on, especially before we got married and everything. So that was something I worked on, leaning back in the relationship. And it was not an overnight process. It was not an overnight switch, but I did see that through this process, things started to change. I started to feel more like the girl in the relationship. And I mean that in a really good way, you know, more of that like princess energy and feeling like you are cherished. I started feeling that again because I allowed him to be in his masculine energy and that made me feel really good. Now, the next thing I did to start healing my feminine energy was I started letting go of that feeling like I always needed to be proving myself. Like I always needed to be doing the best. Like I always needed Needed to be doing things perfectly and i always needed to be winning this is just such a bad mindset to get into and i really just got stuck in this mindset and that really gets you stuck in your masculine energy and it was this artificial feeling of like success is more important than everything else and it just kept me trapped and it kept me really unhappy and so i really had to let go of this belief that i was holding on to and these stories that i was holding on to that i was only really valuable if i was doing certain things in my life if i was achieving certain things in my life and the way that i did that was just by consciously changing the way that i talked to myself and when i would get certain thoughts in my head about needing to achieve and be the best and yada yada
yada yada, I would force myself to change those thoughts or I would just kind of release them and let them go into the nethers. I wanted to get rid of that mindset and the only way I knew how was by telling myself over and over again that that is not what is most important and also by acting in accordance with those thoughts, even if I didn't fully believe it yet. For example, I quit my corporate job and that was a really big deal and you know, old me who is all about like wanting to be the best and do all these fancy things like that wouldn't have worked for me but I didn't make decisions based off of that old identity. I wanted to make decisions off of that new identity that I was trying to create. So I started to live my life in that way. You know, that doesn't mean that I just totally stopped caring about achievements and career and having success and money and all those things. For me personally, those things are important to me and they will always be important to me, but it can't be my most important thing above everything else. To me, that wasn't healthy. So I had to let that belief go. I had to let those feelings go. I had to change my mindset around the fact that I had nothing to prove, that I was worthy as I was. And the more that I tapped into who I was, the more that I would contribute and positively impact the world. Now, another thing that I did, like I said, I did quit my corporate job. So that was a big deal. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not saying everyone should just go quit their jobs, but I'm not going to lie. This really did help me a lot because I, I didn't go like find a new job right away or anything like that. I took time to just kind of heal and be with myself. And I realized that not a lot of people have that opportunity. Luckily I was married at the time, so I was able to do it. We were able to make it work. But having that time to just like slow down and instead of being in a corporate office with artificial lights all day, I could go outside in the sunshine. I could be with the trees and the flowers. I could go walk my dogs at noon on a Wednesday. And those things, those simple little things just felt so good. It was that freedom and that time back to myself and connecting back to myself that really kind of changed the game for me. I also got a puppy during this time. I got Piper during this time. So I'm not saying you should just quit your job and get a puppy, but I am saying it helped me a lot because I was able to get out of that like hamster wheel kind of rut. I was able to just kind of relax and be in nature. I was able to nurture my puppy. Those things just felt so good to me. And I love those things. I love animals. I love like being home and, and doing all those kind of home things, cooking and all that. So having my day basically revolve around that was so incredibly healing for me. My energy started to shift and I started to heal my body. I started to feel better in my body. My mental health started to improve and I started to feel way more tapped into my feminine energy. I started to be way more in my feminine energy in my romantic relationship. And that's when things really started to change. I just think sometimes that when you want to make a big change in your life, like a big mental or mindset shift kind of change, oftentimes when we make a big environmental change or like an external change, it makes those changes easier, right? Like when you want to change your life, sometimes if you move to a whole new city and kind of start over, it's a lot easier for some reason, right? This is kind of the same with me. Once I kind of like got my life back and got my time back and was able to actually just be with myself again and live my life in the way that I wanted to, if I wanted to go for a walk at 2 p.m., I could do that. Once I started having that freedom and that ability to connect back to myself and that ability to slow down and be more present in my day, I started to feel like I was reclaiming my feminine energy. Not because I stopped working and became a housewife, but because of the way that it made me feel. And again, through this process of quitting my job, I did have to let go of that belief that like I always needed to be doing things and you know achieving things and all those things like that. I had to let go of that belief because there was a period of time where I stopped doing that. I was no longer focusing on those things. So my mind had to start getting on board with the way that I was choosing to live my life. Now also another thing that I did, um, so I just kind of made this up myself, but I feel like this is like a little exercise that everyone can benefit from. So when I was in the process of like healing my feminine energy and also just trying to like connect back to myself, I did this thing where I got a journal and every single day at the end of the day, I would write down my favorite things that happened that day. What things happened that day that made me the happiest, that gave me the most joy? Not necessarily the most joy, but also the most satisfaction. And then the goal was to do this for like 30 days and then look back and see if there were any similarities. What are the things that are truly making me happy and what's not? And what's funny is that after doing this for about a month or so, I looked back at my journal and 80% of the things that made me the happiest and the things that I wrote down were the tiny little things 
like cuddling with my dog, going to get ice cream with my husband at night, or cuddling on the couch with him before bed, or reading my favorite book, or going for a walk. Most of the stuff that I put on there were these tiny little moments in my day that most people would think were useless. And through going back and reading that journal, I realized, wow, if these are the things that are making me happy, I must be a naturally very feminine person because this just all screams feminine energy to me. Being outside in nature, being with my animals, prioritizing my relationships. Oh, and another thing that I wrote down a lot was like being a bit more creative, like doing more creative tasks. So that was another thing that is like very much in your feminine energy. So after doing that exercise, I was able to really recognize and make sure that I was doing things that made me happy in my day, that I was prioritizing the things that brought me joy and that made me feel good. And when you do that, your feminine energy will naturally start coming back to you. I mean, the more that I made time to do the things that I love, to do the things that I was passionate about, to even just like cuddle with my dogs sometimes, those things made me happy and those things helped me connect back to that feminine side of me that I was really missing. And yeah, I just started prioritizing my joy. I started prioritizing the things that really, really, truly made me happy. And that doesn't mean that I wasn't ever disciplined or I didn't ever work hard or I didn't ever do chores, but I just made sure that those things, those things that brought me joy were a part of my life because there was a period of time where they weren't. All of those things just got oof out the window. And it got to a point where I even honestly forgot what it was that I loved, what it was that brought me joy. And that's why I had to do that exercise. But I really encourage you guys to do that. It is really interesting to go back and look and be like, okay, what are the things that truly made me the happiest? What were my favorite parts of the day? You can learn a lot about yourself. Now, another thing that I did that kind of goes along with this whole thing was that I started really focusing on romanticizing my life. So in all the little moments, I would try to make those little moments more special. So one thing that the feminine energy does is she makes little things big. And so even when you're working, you know, you can light a candle and play some music that you love. Or when you're doing chores or you're folding laundry, you can listen to a podcast that makes you laugh. There are so many things that we do in our life that we can make a whole lot more enjoyable if we just put in like a little bit of effort in the front end to make it that way. You know, you really have to remember that like it's pretty freaking crazy that we live on this earth and that we have this opportunity to live our life and to experience what it feels like to wake up and live every single day. That is a gift and an opportunity that we have. And we have to remember to take advantage of that, to live every day to the fullest, to wear that special dress, even when it's not such a special day, to eat dinner on the nice plates, even though it's just you eating alone in your apartment. This was one little thing I did that really, really helped me to heal that like wounded feminine energy within me. This really is just such a good tip though. If you want to start getting more in touch with your feminine energy, romanticize all of these little moments in your life. Make all of these little moments special. Make all of these little moments beautiful. Make all of these little moments more fun. And you will start seeing more of that connection to your feminine energy. So the next thing that I did was I healed my attachment style. So you know how there are different like attachment styles in a relationship, right? There's anxious attachment, there's avoidant attachment and secure attachment, which is like the happy one, you know, healthy one. Now I was more of the avoidant attachment one, which is actually more of the more masculine energy one. The anxious attachment one is more of the feminine energy one. I was very avoidant attachment. And whenever there were conflicts in my relationships or anything like that, I basically just like shut down. I wasn't able to communicate. I wasn't able to show my emotions. I definitely was not going to cry. When I felt like things were getting difficult, I would kind of back away in an effort to protect myself. And I knew that I needed to change that. One thing about being more connected to your feminine energy is just being more connected to your heart and your emotions and your feelings and being more open with them when the time is appropriate. And even when it was just me and Cole and you know, it was us just trying to have an honest conversation, I couldn't really do it if I felt like there was too much conflict. I would shut down and that is not healthy feminine energy. I very much just had like this masculine shield over me. And so the way that I fixed this or improved this was I learned about secure attachment and I just started acting as if I had secure attachment, even though I didn't have that. I started identifying as a person that had secure attachment. Even though there were moments where I wanted to completely shut down, I wouldn't do that because I was acting as if that's not how a person with secure attachment 
would act. So for me personally, I had to heal this part of myself because this just like shutting down and not being able to keep my heart open in these moments, it was really disconnecting me from my feminine energy. It wasn't allowing me to be the feminine energy in the relationship. And whenever I try to make like big changes like this, I can oftentimes do them very, very quickly. And that's because I'm able to like shift my identity. So I know sometimes people really struggle with healing their attachment style. And this can sometimes take like a lot of time, like several years. But for me, it only really took like a few months, maybe even less because I was just so intentional about changing this. I allowed myself to be more open. I allowed myself to cry when I wanted to. I allowed myself to be more vulnerable. I allowed myself to feel loved and safe and secure. And this made me feel a lot more whole and complete as a feminine energy woman. Next thing I did to heal my feminine energy was I stopped reading and watching the news. I just basically decided I was done with it, especially with like 2020 that came around. I mean, I pretty much stopped doing this earlier, but then I started watching the news again when 2020 happened because, you know, I wanted to stay up to date on what was going on and all that stuff. And then I just realized like it was pointless. I was basically going to hear about what was happening anyways. Either Cole was going to tell me or Instagram was going to tell me. There's not one thing that I ever really missed. And I just really started protecting my peace because you have to remember that the news is still a business. They are still an entertainment business at the end of the day. And they're constantly trying to get your attention and make you anxious to make you watch longer or read longer so that they can make more money. So I just decided that I was no longer going to do that. I have not really read or watched the news much at all, except for in the beginning of 2020 when all of that stuff started happening. But besides that, I really have basically stayed off of it. And it has made a huge impact in how I feel. It has made me feel less anxious. It has made me feel more at peace. And like I said, going back to that original problem, right? I was in a constant state of fight or flight. I didn't feel safe. And the news perpetuated that same way of thinking. So I really just prioritized my peace and living in my happy little bubble. You have to remember that whatever we perceive in our life is our reality. So I decided that I did not want to have all of this negative stimuli being thrown at me every single time that I woke up in the morning. It just wasn't healthy. And so I cut that out. Next, I started doing more playful things in my day. I learned pickleball. I started playing pickleball. I still play pickleball sometimes. I need to play more of it. It's a really fun game. I started going to the beach a whole lot more. This was when I was living in California, but I started really prioritizing time at the beach because it really just made me so happy. I could go play in the waves, jump over the waves, dive over the waves, get tackled by waves sometimes, but it just kind of helped me to kind of get back in touch with more of that childlike self in a healthy way. I was getting outside more. I was even doing things like baking a whole lot more. All of those things just really made me happy and helped me connect back to that playful side of myself. And that playfulness is a really important part of feminine energy. It's not immaturity. It's not being a child. It's about being able to see the world in a light and fun way. It's about being able to create pleasure and fun in your everyday life. Now, the next thing that I did, and I know I have mentioned this a bunch, so I will just talk about this one briefly, but I did get off of birth control pills and this was also another huge one for me. It really helped me to just embrace my womanhood again and to start getting back in touch with my menstrual cycles and that cyclical nature that we all have as women. And I know I've talked about cycle syncing a bunch as well, so I'm not gonna talk about that, but I also started cycle syncing, learning about cycle syncing and just getting more in touch with my body in that way, learning about the strengths that I had in certain phases of my cycle and just seeing the beauty in our menstrual cycles, you know, learning to love them instead of hate them, taking time to slow down when I did get my period, honoring that sacred time. Another thing that helped me to connect and heal my feminine energy was actually the work that I started doing. I know I've mentioned this before, but I did used to work more in finance and much more in that corporate space. I worked for a big worldwide corporate company, but now I work for myself and I do YouTube and things like that. And what I do now is I learn and I create and I teach and I love it. I am lit up by it. And I truly do think that it is my passion. And my work changed from just getting things done and basically getting things done for other people to 
creating and making an impact and helping other people. The feminine energy is the creation energy. And so they love to create and the feminine energy is lit up by creation. And I was very disconnected from the side of myself before. I always said that I was never a creative person. And while I'm not like the most creative person in the world, being creative makes me happy and it makes me feel more accomplished. Creating something makes me feel good. It makes me feel satisfied, even if it's just videos like this. So because the nature of my work changed, the nature of my day changed. And I was all of a sudden putting my attention into things that I loved, into things that lit me up, into things that made me happy. And if you haven't gotten the theme yet or the hint yet, that is a huge part of healing your feminine energy. Now, the last thing I did to heal my feminine energy was I consciously spent more time with like-minded, high vibe women, women who were trying to be their best selves and really prioritized their well-being. I went to different like women's healing circles or women's events. There was this acupuncture center um, back in Southern California that's really, really amazing, but they had these girls night in events where basically on a Friday night, it was like one Friday night a month, you could just buy a ticket and go and it was a bunch of other like-minded women and you would do community acupuncture. I think there was a woman there who did tarot card readings and you just kind of like talk and hung out and it was just a really good time. It was just like two hours of like-minded women being together and it was so incredibly healing and I never really went with a friend. I mostly just went alone and I still had like a really good time. I've also been to things like new moon circles and like full moon circles. I personally really like astrology. So like I'm into that kind of stuff, but also just like prioritizing spending more time with women. That's something that I have really started to do over the past like five years or so. And I've seen it transform my life. You know, you do become who you spend time with. So if I was only spending time with like my husband and his friend and my brothers, like that's not going to make me feel the most feminine. And I know I've talked about this before, but that's because it is so important as women, we need to be in community with other women. It is healing for us. And the more that you're around other feminine energy, especially other healthy feminine energy, the more that you will start to embody that as well. Okay. I lied. There's actually one more thing that I wanted to talk about and the sun is setting. So I need to make this quick, but I honestly just started loving myself more. I started truly loving myself more. Now, if you have trouble with this, think about it this way. Imagine your childlike self. Imagine you being like eight years old or something like that. See a picture of that in your mind. How would you talk to her, right? You would naturally want to be very loving. You would tell her that she deserves to be loved, that she is worthy, that she is amazing and beautiful as she is. Or if you had a daughter, that is what you would tell her. But now imagine yourself 30 years in the future, 20 years in the future. Think about how she would view you now. She would be telling you the exact same things. She would be saying that you are worthy, that you deserve amazing, things in your life, that you deserve great love, that you are a wonderful person, that you are a beautiful person. You have to start seeing yourself as that person who wants to love on herself, who wants to nurture herself and learning to just embrace who I was and love who I was and love the things that made me special, what made me unique, that helped me to just feel more comfortable with who I was as a person and feel more comfortable in my own self and my own feminine energy. The feminine energy wants to feel loved. They want to feel cherished. And that is not just the job of the man in your life. It's also your job as well. So I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Give this a like if you liked it. It really does help me out. Share this with a friend. Subscribe below if you haven't. And I will see you next time. Bye.